Hi, welcome back to the Swift Fox build channel and this build update video. So a few days ago, I got back from my uh, trip home for my friend's wedding and I feel like I've just about recovered from it. So I'm back out the hangar now uh, to get back into the swing of things of building the kit fox. While I was away, uh, some parts arrived. So first off, I got some more of the Loctite 680 bearing retaining compound. Really need this to continue on with the build. And I also got some parts uh, from Kit Fox. So uh, the replacement parts to make a new control column bracket uh, arrived. And I also got some optional kits that I hadn't originally ordered. Uh, I got the trim position sensor kit, autopilot servo kit, low fuel sender kit, and uh, butt rib closeout kit. Seeing as I'm kind of working in the flight controls area right now, I'm probably going to get to installing the trim position sensor kit and the autopilot servo kit soon, maybe in the next few days to a week. So it's kind of nice that they've uh, arrived now. So now that I'm back and uh, these parts have arrived, I can kind of get back into the little, uh, finishing up the little jobs that I'd left right before the trip. So first off, I'm going to get this rear elevator bell crank installed, seeing as I have the Loctite 680 and I'll start rebuilding this uh, control column bracket so they can get the control column and sticks uh, mounted in. I've also started working on the uh, center console, so I've kind of got it roughly positioned here, and I'll you know, back drill that and get that mounted so that I can move on to working on the detent brackets for the uh, flap lever and adjustable rudder pedal levers. So with that, I'm going to get started and back into the build. So I'm about to get started on making attempt number two of this column control mounting bracket. And I figured out what I'm going to do for drilling the mounting holes in it. I've got this scrap piece of plywood and what I've done is I've actually back drilled through it to get the uh, template for the mounting holes. And when I've got the new bracket built, what I'll do is I'll figure out uh, its placement in the fuselage. This time, making sure to try get uh, as close to the center line of, of this box part of the bracket as possible. So once I've figured out the, the placement of it, I'll use a really fine tip Sharpie and come up through the bottom and, and mark the hole. I'll just color it in. And so I can take the bracket off and then I'll put it onto uh, this drill template and I'll kind of visually uh, uh, line it up with the markings I've made, clamp it together, and then use the drill press to drill the four uh, mounting holes. That should get it uh, you know, as accurate as I can get it, and um, you know, it should be a, a lot better job than I did last time. So I'm going to get start, started building on this and, and getting it all together. Yeah, 
There we go. Whoa. There. So that little stalk just pops off. And there you go. You've got a perfect, perfect rivet in there. Beauty. You want to do this one again? That's right, number two. So it's been about a week since I was last out building the airplane. Some family have been over visiting, so we've been doing a lot of touristy stuff. I do have a couple of them with me today to give me a hand. So I've got my cousin David and my brother Darren here. Uh, David grew up on a farm. He's got a degree in mechanical engineering and has done a number of years in the medical device engineering profession and now is a full-time dairy farmer. And then uh, my brother Darren, uh, he's an actuary. So what we're going to get working on today, uh, myself and Dave, we're going to be finishing up the control column installation into the fuselage. And Darren, if you want to maybe go grab the coffees, <laughs> I'll have a latte, regular milk. Dave? Yeah, latte, sounds good. <laughs> All right, the control column and control sticks are finally mounted in and connected up to everything. This has probably been the trickiest part of the build so far, I would say. You know, uh, aside from, you know, being away on vacation, having family visit, needing to redo a couple of parts, it took a lot of, you know, time and effort to get uh, all of this put in. The biggest issue I had was with the bearing block. When I was drilling the second hole uh, for its mounting, um, the block deformed quite a bit, uh, which meant that you know when everything was mounted in and torqued up correctly, like it took a lot of force to move the stick fore and aft. So that necessitated removing quite a lot of material uh, out of the uh, bearing block to get back that clearance fit with the control column. We'd have seen in the time lapse we started off hand sanding, but that was getting nowhere quickly. So I invested in a, a drum sander bit, uh, put that into the drill press, and then was able to kind of aggressively um, uh, go at the bearing block with that. 
and managed to get it opened up uh, enough for um, what I think is a, a pretty reasonable clearance fit at the moment. The other thing I needed to do was um, I had to use a few washers on both the bearing block and the uh, mounting bracket to um, establish a certain angle that me meant the most uh, uh, freedom of movement. So kind of you know, illustrating with the old bracket here and if this is the control column, I noticed that if there was a slight angle, and I'll exaggerate a little bit here, if there was a slight angle with the control column, uh, that got the most uh, free movement relative to if it was maybe perpendicular, um, more perpendicular to the bracket. So um, using washers, I was able to kind of uh, recreate that angle by um, uh, kinking up one side of the uh, bracket and then over on the bearing block, just using a couple of washers to raise it up slightly on that end. And that meant the, um, the movement, uh, you know, fore and aft of the stick and the control column was like very smooth. So just had to do those two things to get uh, everything mounted in. And now the, um, the movement is quite nice. Um, I'm hesitant to take any more material out of the bearing block uh, in case I end up going uh, introducing slop. So I'm kind of happy with where it is right now. What I'm going to move on to next uh, is complete putting in the uh, center console. I have had it mounted in already. I've got the mounting holes drilled. And what I need to do is get the flap detent bracket and the uh, adjustable rudder pedal detent brackets installed into the center console. So I have them uh, made up and ready to go. So I just need to find their placements uh, and drill and rivet them in. So going to get going on that. Job done, or almost done, with the center console. I have all the detent brackets uh, in place and drilled and held in with some Clicos. 
Now the manual calls out to rivet them in with these uh, flush head pop rivets, but I think I'm going to be painting my center console the same color as my panel. And if I do that, I'm, I'm going to want it all like solid and smooth. So I think I'm going to use solid rivets instead, flush head solid rivets. So I'm going to order a bunch of those and a rivet gun. Um, uh, and once they arrive, I'll, I'll finish up the detent brackets, but it's kind of, it's okay for now. I think what I want to move on to next now is the doors and these triangle windows back here uh, and give those a go. So that's probably what I'm going to start next. So I think I'll wrap this video up here. But before I do, I want to make a, a quick shout out to Martin Nee from Clifton in Ireland. He flies a, a Kit Fox Model 4. And he uh, commented on one of my videos a few days before I was heading home for my friend's wedding. And we arranged to meet uh, and you know have a chat and, and have a look at his Kit Fox. So I had a couple of uh, hours uh, with him, checking out his Kit Fox and chatting all things flying. Uh, I just wanted to say, Martin, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure. I uh, hope I can get back someday uh, uh, to check it out and maybe get in the air. And uh, if you can get to Vancouver and see my build at some point, it'd be great too. Martin does have a YouTube channel with a few videos um, with him flying around the west of Ireland. And uh, I'd highly recommend checking them out. I'd hazard to say that the scenery in the west of Ireland would rival some of the other aviation YouTubers, you know, particularly in the Pacific Northwest, etc., of uh, you know, the States and Canada. Um, so uh, check those out. I'll put a link in. There's one in particular. I'll do whatever the link thing is here um, of that video. Um, and yeah, I'm going to get cracking on the, the door frames and the window frames. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. So it's been about a week since I was out building the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>